There we go, folks. I'm so sorry that this video is late. Oh, wait. Where's, where's my wire? Oh, that's right. It was Christmas. And even though this did not come down the chimney for me. I still have my bevy of Christmas gifts. So right now, I do have to show it off. I'm so proud of this. My snowball microphone. Oh, wow. <laughs> that means I'm like becoming semi-professional. So I can kind of put that there. I can go hands-free so I can sit back a little bit. I'm constrained by wires, but not that much. I know it's, well, probably going to be Sunday or late Saturday night, whenever this actually gets up. But the one thing is, this is the last clean wrestling t-shirt I have. Everything else is in the laundry. Um, I wore my hobo shirt last Saturday to the NAWA. I'd like to thank all those people for, all, for watching. Um, then I was just kind of wearing them throughout the week. It's just that, <laughs> that time of the month, I guess. I don't know. Where I don't have any other wrestling t-shirts to wear. I'm still enjoying a lot of my Christmas stuff. Bro, all my goodies to work. And I have some goodies to give out to you guys. Because I actually caught up a little bit on the wrestling, even though I know, and I'll get into that, um, SmackDown was taped. I forget about AEW, but I did watch, I did catch the replay of AEW. Um, I was just tired. The whole idea of Christmas kind of just songs you after, after you deal with family. You need a lot stronger stuff than this sometimes. But it's pretty good though. So I can't complain. And this is amazing. I can like be wireless or near wireless. So again, I'd like to thank a whole bunch of people. Um, I think a whole bunch of people is actually watching as well with me on Friday night for, again, it was a tape smackdown. So there are some quibbles that I do have. But I'll tell you what. Uh, let's see here. What do I start off? Okay. Octagonic. You, sir, always win twice with that six count. I 
slam the table. You, sir, get out of here. Phoenix C19, you sir are a master of the air guitar. Ruin, you sir are just driving along with your briefcase boombox. Swagzilla, you sir can crawl out of here. The breath of redemption? You, sir, are very devious. You win by dirty pen. The Bean Frey Wyatt. You're not a part of the Firefly Funhouse. You're a member of the El Generico Band. Final loo. Holy sit. The Bischoffs, I don't know they'd actually they would actually partake in a wrestling program, because you know that Jordan has back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Marky Mark. You, sir, are just partaking in the Mundo Madness.
Bill Murray. You need a special one because Natalia is superior. And then Fuller Knox, you saw all that luchador on a forklift. So with that, let's see here. I can actually play with the position of this. This is cool. So again, I can kind of go wireless. You just have to watch the reverb here. Well, that's pretty good. Oh, and there's the hobo cat. And she comes into the place looking herself. Just kind of meandering around. She's confused because I had to work today, so I was gone all day. Then I'll tell you what, this is so nice. That's so cool. So again, this is a, a double show, so this is going to be fairly long. I do apologize for that. Um, I think with Wednesday being the eve of Christmas Eve, I went up to Jacksonville. I had to go, had to go hang out with some friends. We got to give some gifts, some, some go bring some Christmas joy to people. And then Friday, I think I took a nap. I just had to take a nap, and I realized up seven thirty. You know what? Might as well watch pro wrestling, get some stuff done around the house. I think I still have one more Christmas gift to kind of open and somewhat deal with. And I'm going to be doing that tomorrow. I'm going to watch a video. My boss gave me off Saturday. Oh, it feels For Sunday. It's going to feel so good. I'm going to rage play some video games. I'm not quitting until I defeat that one boss. I'm, uh, because I have off Sunday so I can do that. I set the heat for 60 degrees so the pipes won't freeze. I think when I woke up this morning, it was 59. So yeah, that's like the edge of my comfort level. I think my cat was with me underneath the blanket, so maybe keep her warm too. I have to go start the oven. I have to go make my leftover pizza. Um, tonight, it's a yummy Italian meats pizza. Because I didn't feel like really cooking, and I'm saving a whole bunch of stuff for tomorrow's. I think I'm having either a pork chop omelet. Sounds amazing in and of itself. Or I don't know, something else. I'll think of that later. But let's talk about some AEW. Uh, starts off pretty fun. Uh, well, there is some reverb there. There goes a cat, as you can see her leave. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually sounds when I get to it. I'll, I still might have to fill it with stuff, but that's okay. As long as I'm fiddling with stuff, I can dial things in pretty good. Again, this is going to be fun. Again, I'd like to thank my, my parents that got me my Christmas gift. Um, I'm going to be using that every <laughs> fairly often. And I think the cool thing about it is that the cable's long enough where I can actually you now sit on the couch over there where that big pillow is. And my cat just jumped on. Um, watch videos on my couch. Put the big, put the screen up, have a total wrestling immersion. 
Um, too bad I couldn't. I'm, def I'm definitely doing that next year for Triple Mania. They need to have Triple Mania. Or I have to figure out when Ray de Reyes is. Because that's another show I can definitely get away with live streaming. We'll see. Enough about that. That's in the future. I need to deal with what's in the present right now. So let's talk about some AEW. Starts off Chris, uh, first match, Chris Jericho versus MJF. I'm sorry, Chris Jericho and MJF versus Top Flight. Airwolf. They even have, like, I mean, <laughs> too bad the Airwolf theme's been copyrighted because the Airwolf theme fits them nearly perfectly. Um, it's a pretty good back and forth. With Chris Jericho, and, and I don't know who, who they are. Um, with the uh, top flight number one, with Airwolf pilot number one. And then top flight, eventually, again, once they begin to quicken the pace, again, you can definitely tell where the match is going to go. MJF and Chris Jericho are going to definitely keep a slower pace match. Whereas top flight is going to try to make it a little bit faster paced. And, and have that quickened pace to it. Which is really good because again you see this contrast of styles now. Uh, Chris Jericho is definitely not doing all the flips that he used to. Every so often he'll bust out a line salt. MJF, eh, every so often he might go to the top rope for the classic double axe handle shot, but they're not really doing the flippy stuff that Top Flight is. So it's good to see. Um, MJF definitely knows how to heal it up. Then eventually all, all four men get in the ring. It was pretty good. Then they did the classic corn, uh, top flight. Got Chris Jericho in one corner. MJF on the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was good to see. You know what? It's been a while since we've seen that. And even then, only a few wrestlers do that nowadays. It used to be a, a pretty much a staple thing. Roman Reigns has the ten short clotheslines. Uh, Sheamus has the ten beats of the Belfry. Normally people don't go don't go for that for that ten punch. That was really good. Again, the heel work by Chris Jericho and MJF was really amazing to watch. They definitely get how to be heels. Uh, I think again the thing that this match kind of suffered from that other AEW matches have also suffered from is that it gets it feels longer than it should be. Top Flight is a good tag team. For them to go against someone on Dark and have a, a, a good match against another kind of no-name tag team is fine. This is Chris Jericho and MJF. They should not be giving these two that much of an issue. So that's my... Uh, that and, again, so many false finishes, it gets to, to be long in the tooth. I'll say that. Uh, Chris Jericho, again, he does that big belly to back. Drop, that was good to see. MJF, again, he knows how to do the heel work. He knows how to cheat. He knows how to do the, the sneaky double team stuff when Chris Jericho distracts the ref. MJF just, just chokes him along the ropes. Yeah. So, again, it's really good to see MJF do that. Then, again, top flight. They quicken the pace. The standing Spanish fly. Okay, only because it's Chris Jericho should that not be a finisher. But that should have definitely warranted a two count. MJF, he hits, he gets nailed by, he eats a missile drop kick. They did the, oh, they did the fabulous Rougeau buck buck spot. That was cool. I have not seen that in a long time. That's when the one Rougeau brother drapes the one guy on his ropes, hold him. The other Rougeau brother jumps onto his back. That was good to see. I think the, I know some other team probably did that, but the Fabulous Rougeau is kind of, that was one of their signature moves, though. Then the Lion Tamer gets countered to a roll-up pin. Uh, Chris Jericho, you idiot! I like that when he yells, you idiot. MJF then eventually hit that draping pile driver on the one guy. One, two, three. It was okay, it just seemed to go on a little bit longer than it should for Top Flight. I do understand that they're trying to build Top Flight. They can do that without kind of sacrificing Chris Jericho and MJF. But overall, I'll tell you what, it was a good cheeseburger match. And then MJF, um, or Jake Hagar says, where's Wardlow at? All he does is stare at me. I want to fight him. 
I guess I've heard worse reasons to fight people. Then we go into a couple other thing, couple other things. We have Acclaim did a Christmas video for us. Uh, Tony inter Tony Schiavone interviews Sting. Darby Allen uh, shows up. Team Taz is there. Uh, MJF is there with Ortiz. I think a member of his family passed away. So or or, or I forget who exactly. I wasn't paying that much attention to it. But yeah, that was kind of that nice heart heartwarming moment. Again, MJF is kind of building. I think saying, "Hey, I'm I'm one of you guys. We'll see what happens." Then we have the Dark Order take on the Jurassic Express. It was Colt Cabana, 5 and 10, taking on Marco Stunt, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus. Again, this was actually a fairly fun event. It starts off with Marco Stunt and Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana's like, do I really have to face this little twerp? Uh, he just said how sure he was. Colt begins to take it to him. Eventually, 5 gets, uh, five gets in against Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt eventually evades him. Gets double teamed uh, by Marco Stunt and Luchasaurus. And a, a lot of the match, and I can understand why the focus of this match was actually this, is that Luchasaurus likes to use Marco Stunt as a weapon. Using Marco Stunt as a weapon technically isn't illegal because he is a participant. If Luchasaurus wants to pick him up and drop him on people, he can do that. No, no to chairs. But yeah, using Marco Stunt as a weapon, that's all good, though. And then, ouch, Luchasaurus. Again, he started to use all... Then he started to use Jungle Boy as a weapon. Then there was a good little back and forth between the Dark Order and the Jungle Express. Uh, five and ten. Got beat up a little bit. Luchasaurus, again, the fact that he can do a standing loop is also impressive for a guy of his height. Uh, stunt gets like killed. I feel so bad for him. They they, they like broke Marco Stunt there for a moment. However, again they use Marco Stunt as a weapon. Uh, Dracus Express eventually does does the finish with the Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus spot. It was it was it was good. I, it was entertaining though. I did again probably the thing that I like the most is that they use Marco Stunt as a weapon. So they're. They're kind of saying, yeah, he's small in stature, but look at how he's used. He's not doing, he's not that credible of a threat until Luchasaurus grabs him and starts beating him into people. So that, so, so that was good. Um, Tony, uh, Jurassic Express wins. Cheeseburger match. Tony Schiavone goes in for the interview. Uh, FDR interrupt. Uh, Marco Stunt and uh, Tully has some some me some mean words for Marco Stunt. Yeah, he probably deserves that. Then we have Marvez was trying to interview Kenny Omega. Uh, Don Callis got involved. Don Callis is just so good. Again, Kenny Omega, a member of the Bullet Club for life. Just like the real rock and roller. Kenny Omega, boom, or bang, can't say boom, because that's Adam Cole, babies, thing, and the next match was a Butcher versus Pac, Butcher got, Butcher got some new gear, he looks like, he literally looks like, like an old English fighter from like Bloodsport, I forget what the name, I think it's called The Quest, it was Jean-Claude Van Damme, Roger Moore, it was like, an old timey martial arts competition. That's what it felt like, and that's what the butchers like dressed like. There's a big English guy, He's throwing some tights, <clears throat> old cummerbund or sash around his waist, and he just looks like he just like could beat up people with his like. He looks like the old timey bare knuckle brawler. Pac is just Pac. Um, I said the butcher is thick. Pac is just jacked. Um, the kicks by Pac have a, have a little bit of effect. Again, the butcher looks like an old-time old English villain. Again, someone you, you see inside the British pub just waiting to have some fisticuffs. The bunny acts as a distraction, um, parts of the match. Um, butcher, oh, those chops. You know, he, he's, 
he knows how to deliver those perfectly. And then there's a brawl on the outside, which is always good to see. The butcher again, he has that classic knee drop right to the, puts the point of the knee right to the, the head, the forehead of Pac. Pac's definitely a little bit quicker, but he's much, he's also very resilient though too. And this makes sense. So in this match, there weren't as many false finishes. You had Eddie Kingston um, on commentary telling the butcher what to do to a degree. Pac countered. Power bomb by something, and then hit a shotgun drop. Kick. That was good. The butcher hit a running power bomb. I almost thought that was it. And the thing that made this match actually pretty good. In fact, I'm gonna upgrade it now, only because of the end. But it was almost gonna be a surf and turf match because at least there was only like the one true false finish after the running power bomb. That makes sense. It wasn't big move, false finish, big move, false finish, big move. It wasn't like it wasn't like that. So it was good. Uh, eventually, as Archer shows up as his own distraction to Eddie Kingston, then that was enough. Uh, Pac eventually dropped the butcher, hits the black arrow. Pac wins. They don't necessarily need Lance Archer. And without Jake the Snake, Lance Archer just seems like the big guy who does. He, he's kind of the, the, big, the big heel that does what he wants to do. Uh, I don't know. There's something about Lance Archer. Maybe it's from his days of spitting water in New Japan, where it's it just kind of like turned you off, turned me off to him. That he was all always in like that like no name tag. He was always like whoever in, in his faction needed a tag team partner. <clears throat> he was kind of the person who was it. Overall, it was a good match. It was a solid again cheeseburger match. And whoa, that, that the Jade woman, has, she has some mommy bags on her. She did an interview. Um, then we had Miro, Kip Sabian, and Penelope. That's about the wedding on TNT. It, it's a beach, beach bash wedding. Instead of bash at the beach, it's a be, beach bash. Somatics is the same thing that his papa used to do. Or at least Cody's papa used to do. Um, Penelope... She almost looked cute because she was wearing a leather jacket, but she had on like a cat t-shirt on underneath. That was kind of funny. Then they fake out the best friends because they beat up one of the best friends, put him in the ambulance. So this will be interesting to see. Miro as the big heel is good. In a tag team situation, obviously Kip, Sab um, yeah, Kip Saban is going to get beat up a lot. And then of course Meryl will make make be will be the big man in that situation. So it's gonna be I, I, I fear somewhat predictable. Then we have Evil Uno taking on Dustin Rhodes. Uh, starts outside the ring. Evil Uno goes in the ring, Dustin Rhodes just he's so upset about the fact that Evil Uno referenced seven from WCW. Probably probably one of the worst gimmicks ever. Again, seven is in reference to the, the seven deadly sins. I think that I think movie seven was just on the science fiction channel too, so that was pretty cool. Um, let's see here. More like forties. Yeah. Uh, not ten. More like forties. <laughs> that's a very. That's just how old th that idea has been. Uh, very slow paced match. Very strike heavy. More the, the stomps by Dustin was pretty good. Uno did eventually hit a swanton. Then go back to the outside. Um, Dustin eventually he did some weird like cross body. Like he went to the top. I think he got confused or slipped or something happened where he tried to do a cross body, but it just looked like it was like a cross body moonsault. It was really weird. I don't think he got the full rotation because it looked like he just delivered like a spinning elbow from the top rope. It wasn't necessarily the smoothest move. And at Dustin's age, it's not something you really want to do too often either. 
Then there was the running bulldog that kind of ended it. That's it's kind of anticlimactic. Uh, Dustin and then begins to beat up Evil Uno. The Dark Order interrupt. Lee Johnson's there to make the save. It was okay. It was really a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have Sean Spears comes out. Um, he, it's like a New York shoot interview. There are rumors that Sean Spears is off the AEW roster. So he has been ousted from NXT. I think he very, made a very brief showing on the WWE main roster. And then just like, pfft, then, he, then he left for AEW and whatever bridges he, he's burnt, he's not going back there. Um, then let's see. Then Hot Dosh is there. Dosh is this look. So then, in the next match, we have Hikaru Shida versus... I don't even, I don't even know, I don't, I didn't even catch your name. It was that quick. Uh, Chris, Grisia something? I forget. Um, it's just, it was a near squash match. The Kirishita for the most part hides away. Uh, Grisia gets, gets some strikes in. She did like, like the one move, uh, sliding boots. Yeah, it was okay. And I, I can actually appreciate the fact that this was, for the most part, a squash match. Again, they let, they let uh, 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 Garcia get some moves in. Not bad. Again, it's, it's Hakaru Shida. And she, granted, she should be getting squash matches. It's just that you don't want to see her in squash matches. Because you're all just like, okay, she's going to just... Because you know there's no credible threat in this woman. Um... She hit the felt uh, again. Eventually, there was the counter. She had the big rising knee on the apron. Hit the falcon arrow. Yep. She pinned Garcia. One, two, three. Ham sandwich of a match, really. And then she finds Abandoned on the outside, and there's a brawl between Abandoned and Sheeta. I want to say at the next pay per view. Which I don't think is until February that they're gonna have the title match, and Hikaru Shida might actually drop that belt to Abaddon. I'll tell you what, Abaddon without her makeup is freaking an amazingly hot woman. She looks so freaky though when she gets all dolled up though. And then we have our main event of the evening. We have Acclaim versus the Young Bucks. This was an okay match. I have no clue who would claim are. Mainly because I don't really watch Dark. Um, on Tuesdays, I, I tend to say more toward... I watch my impact. And then I really don't... And then I just say, okay, I'm, I'm, I've had enough. Three hours of Raw is really all I can take, I think. As far as one entire sit-down thing. If I have to watch more, it's, it's not going to end well. At least I won't feel well afterwards. But this was this was kind of fun. Uh, young Buck Matt again. He works over the arm of, of the one guy. I claim I have no idea who they are though. Young Bucks again. They go through their classic double team set. For the most part, it's really typical a Young Bucks match. Nick, who is he's balding Buck, gets in and then. Again, hits hits that flip reverse DDT. That actually looked really good. It's like a like a flying tornado DDT. That was fun to see. On the outside. And then we have the claim they work over the young bucks a little bit. Um the one guy got the knees up when when Nick Jackson tried to do something. Then there was like some weird turnbuckle spot. It just didn't flow right. And this can be a problem. This has been a problem in some Young Bucks matches where they're tr it seems like they're trying to do too much. It's one of those things where it sounds grand, great on paper, but when you actually try it in like in a cold arena, uh, you don't know what the ropes are like. You don't know what. You don't know how warm they are. You don't know how cold they are. There's a whole bunch of other weird conditions. 
where it, it seems great if they were in a climate controlled, decently warm building. Um, definitely not forty degrees, and and yeah, it wasn't thirty. It wasn't it, it wasn't minus ten with the wind chill. Every so often, it will get into the upper mid to maybe upper twenties. Tony minus ten. No, that's like that's like Michigan weather. Okay, that's like a nice warm spring Michigan day minus ten. But yeah, in Florida, I know I know it's like Florida's freezing over. Oh, and by the way, I do have a couple of other unofficial shout-outs to give. Titusville, New Jersey. You actually made two lists. I was impressed by that. Um, one that had to deal with wrestling. I think um, the one guy from Acclaim came from Titusville. The other thing is that on Generation Films, they compared Night City of Cyberpunk to the size of Titusville. Impressive. But yeah, it, it doesn't get down to negative 10 in Florida. Um, I can deal with like in the 50s, so that's not too bad. In fact, I might just crank the heat up just a little bit. Maybe because my kitty cat's all curled up in a ball. And I came back from the gym, and I still have to take a shower, so I'm going to be a little bit chilly. So I might turn the heat up just a smidge, but then when I go to bed, it goes back to like 60 degrees, and I'll be fine. Again, mainly for the pipes. I don't want... Pipes bursting is a very bad thing. Where was I now? Oh, yeah. The one guy got the knees up. It was a weird turnbuckle spot. It's like it's like they're trying to do too much, and I'm sure Acclaim can actually do it. If they had on their paced match, instead of working the Young Bucks paced match, I'm sure they could do it. If the Young Bucks were facing... What's another good flippy tag team out there? If they were facing probably uh, Lucha... Um, I'm so, Yeah, the Lucha Brothers, they could hit that spot. Um, any team with experience doing that kind of stuff, they could probably do it. I don't know about the experience level of a claim, though. Then, again, Road Warrior Buck. Just no cells. Um, again, they, 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 they go into the figure nine that, or the sharpshooter. The Young Bucks, uh, they have a near doomsday device. And then they did the um, Northern Lights Bridging Suplex Train. I forget. Uh, locomotion, I guess he calls it. He only hit two out of the three, though. Then. Yeah, one part I could have sworn I heard. I could have sworn I heard a three count there somewhere. They've done that a few times in AEW, and I kind of really like. Uh, referee doesn't know what, what it is. And then there was, of course, a ref bump. Uh, claim they go for the pin, the new, the, the claim gets pinned, the new ref shows up. I thought, oh, wow. Like, they were going to get pinned, the new ref shows up. Maybe they are going to go over. I'm like, that would be interesting. The one guy from a claim goes through the table, the other guy eats the BTE trigger. Young Bucks win. Not much to complain about, but I mean, it's, it's not a surf and surf match. It's actually a good cheeseburger match. And now it's time to talk about some SmackDown. There we go. See, I can actually sit back and like enjoy and relax while I make these, while I make these videos. I'm so happy again. Merry Christmas, everyone. My Christmas gifts are right here. I'm so happy with it. And wow. That's amazingly clear, too. I just don't feel like holding it, though. Actually, just putting it right there. Having it face me is really good, too. I'm, I look, next AAA event, check out it on the Hobo and Girlfriend, and then one day I'll have a, actually, I need this one, I had a girlfriend, so that way I didn't have to hold the mic up to her face. Wow. I'm so skilled now. I have, actually, I won't, actually, wait a second. I have not used this in so long. I wonder how that fits. Oh, wow. 
That almost works right there, too. So that's actually pretty good. I'm shocked. It's rare that I shock myself. I don't think I've ever used... Oh, there's a poker chip. What the hell was... I don't know. Again, it's so rare. I have this new experience. I have technology. And I wonder if I can move closer. There we go. Again, I'm still kind of experiencing and experimenting with various positions now that I actually have stuff that is applicable to, to again, my hobby. Again, one day I do hope to make it big, but that's the one new way, but I am still having fun. It gives me something to do. Everyone does need a hobby. So again, now it's time to buy some SmackDown. And I'll tell you what, if this is how they're going to have SmackDown as pre-taped shows, you know what? It was good. It was amazingly good compared to... You know, Raw was good. And in the past, SmackDown's been good. This was just so much better, though. I don't know if it's... Like, what they did with it. But the quality of SmackDown really improved. And I think it's because they cut out all of the filler talks... Oh, that's a little too close to the, to the... That's okay. I tried at least. I think it's because they cut out all the filler stuff and just said, hey, we only have two hours. We're going to have like 20, like good 20 minute long matches that mean something. We'll put in a little tease here and there, but it's not like Raw where you start off with 20 minutes before they actually get to the actual wrestling. Although seeing Alexa Bliss on a swing was kind of hot though. That was good. But again, if you do that over and over and over and over again, eventually it's going to get old. This was good. Um, SmackDown started off really hot with Roman Reigns taking on Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. If you're going to have a steel cage match to open up Raw or Ra open up SmackDown, and it's not even going to be the main event. Whoa. Uh, again, it was really good. Uh, Roman, he sends K KO into the cage. Again, face first in that unforgiving steel. Kevin Owen needed to bleed a little bit more. That was my only quibble about it. Um, did the Samoan drop. Again, Kevin just needs to bleed. Then Kevin Owens countered with a DDT. Now Roman Reigns goes head first in the cage. And it would be interesting to see Roman reactions uh, Roman Reigns' reaction if he actually bled too. Indeed. Again, then we have a little good back and forth. Uh, Roman counters a pop-up powerbomb with a leg lariat. I was shocked. I do like the fact that Roman Reigns is doing more as a wrestler. He just He's just not into that, 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 that trap of the five moves of doom. So that's good. Again, they're building Roman. His character is great. He's, he's actually darn good as a heel. Very entertaining stuff. Uh, let's see here. Um, so like Larry, uh, Kevin Owens eventually does it. He gets Roman Reigns down, hits a sp frog splash on him, kick out Roman. Then he has his own sit out power bomb that he uses. Kevin Owens kicks out of that. Then the guillotine choke between the cage and the ropes, but that gets countered because where Roman's chin was was right on the top rope. Kevin Owens starts to pull pull him down. So now uh, Roman Reigns starts to fade. Good spot, great ring awareness. Uh, KO actually hits the stunner. Roman Reigns kicks up, but it does, it, it does, it's a solid two. Sweet count right there. Um, again, there was no escape. K KO's no escape. I uh, did the Canadian headbutt, probably the weakest Canadian, the weakest of all headbutts. Uh, he eventually does hit. He, he tried, Kevin Owens tried for a swanton. Roman got the knees up. Uh, Kevin Owens kicks out of that. Uh, Kevin Owens slammed, slammed the door on Roman as he tried to get out. Uh, KO holds Roman in the cage and eventually hits another pop-up powerbomb. Or pop another pop-up powerbomb gets countered by a Superman punch. That was good. Uh, Kevin Owens does get a little bit of an advantage. 
He does hit another stunner onto Roman. He realizes that the door is open. Uh, Kevin Owens kicks the door and hits poor Jay Uso. Jay Uso, he brought handcuffs. We haven't seen a good handcuff spot. Instead of handcuffing him to the rope where he just kind of slides around, he actually handcuffed him to the fence. So he's stuck in one position, so that's good. And then Kevin Owens just started cursing. Oh, it's so good. Kill Kevin Steen. Kill. 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 Kevin Steen is still best Kevin Owens. So what can I do that? Oh, yeah, I can just do that later. I don't have to. As long as I make video, I can do that whenever only because I'm getting hungry and I want to watch movies and play video games. So I can have this. Yeah, this isn't going up till Sunday, by the way. But... Yeah, so Roman Reigns wins. I'll tell you what. A lot of people saying it's not as good as a TLC match. I disagree. I think this was actually better than the TLC. And having the structure like a cage there made it better. So I think this is actually a surf and turf match. Then we had Asuka and Charlotte taking on... It was a triple threat elimination tag team match. So the one... Of course, you have the champions, Asuka and Charlotte. They were taking on... Bailey and Carmella taking on Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. And the first thing is, I'm like, they're not putting the belts... Bianca Belair hasn't been around long enough to get the belts. Carmella's not getting a tag team belt either. Like, that's just very simply not happening. Um, Carmella. What a whore she is. She comes out. um, I think the only thing... Oh, I'll get to that. For the most part, uh, Bailey works over Asuka a little bit. Carmella gets... Is obviously not ready for Asuka. Carmella was not ready to... To wrestle either, because she was adjusting her bottoms, because her bottoms were drooping a little bit. Um, you could see the pantyhose topping them. Yeah. Um, oh, I was going to say something crude and rude about her and Corey Graves, but I forget what it was. I think we mentioned that somewhere in the text. <laughs> I forget what it was now. No, it wasn't that. No, that was another funny thing. We were just... With Carmella came in, it's like we were just making all kinds of lewd comments about various women in the WWE and what they do with their men. I think, yeah, does Carmella breastfeed? No. Um, whoa, where'd my mind go there for a moment? Um, Bianca and Charlie get into it a little bit. They do, uh, they knock each other down. They do mirror kip-ups. Then there was an outside spot fest. Um, for the most part, Asuka was taking a lot of the big bumps, too. Uh, taking the brunt of most of it. There was, again, the rough distraction. Of course, the heel, Bailey and Carmella. They would take advantage of that. Makes sense. Uh, Bailey then goes into Shinlock, me- Shinlock Mania. Which is okay, because it actually didn't last long enough. Uh, Charlotte eventually... Gets to wrestle Sasha a little bit. The fall away slam. Sasha did a frog splash onto Bailey, And there was some really nasty spot here. Yeah, like Sasha delivered a really stiff meteor to Asuka. And she's lucky Asuka did not look for any receipts. Oh no, it was, it was a stiff meteora to Charlotte. Like, literally, Charlotte was, like, you can almost hear her say, like, what the F? Because, again, Sasha Banks, that's why she's known as Sasha Bosch most of the time. She's, that, unless she's in a tag team where she's really protected, there's you're just waiting for the moment when she's going to screw something up. Because for some reason, she always does. Especially with Charlotte Flair. Charlotte's just unlucky. I don't know what else to say. You know what? I'm just going to finish that. Actually, I could do that. Actually, I can make pizza then do that too. Now that I think about it. 
I don't know. I'll figure something out. Doesn't doesn't take long to do that. Doesn't take long to do either, actually. Um, let's see here. And Bianca gets get gets in. Um, Bianca repunzled her hair to Charlotte, and then hit a moonsault. That was good to see. Uh, Oscar hip attacks. Carmella out of the ring. Sasha's out. Bianca's confused. I want to say Charlotte hits a natural selection onto Carmella. This is actually, um, oh yeah, yeah. Then they then they get eliminated. So that's pretty cool. So the first team out was Bailey and Carmella. Then it was Sasha, Sasha and Bianca. And I think that's when the media or spot came in. So yeah, um, actually it was a really good match. Oscar and Charlotte won. Solid surf and surf match. Minus and one, minus that one Sasha Botch. It was actually really good. Then we have the Street Profits. Uh, Sami Zayn comes in. Sami Zayn got a Christmas gift. It was I am not the Intercontinental Champion. I'll, when I heard it was going to be Biggie and Sami Zayn in the main event. I kind of had a prediction. I'm like, you know, this this smells like a title change. We'll see what happens. Because then it was Daniel Bryan versus Jey Uso. This was this was okay. Uh, Jey Uso jumps Daniel Bryan on the way in, um, just beating him. He just threw him right to the Christmas, the pile of Christmas gifts. That's always that's always a funny spot to see. Then there was a belly to back superplex that Daniel Bryan hit when they get back in the ring. In the ring, Daniel Bryan is a much better wrestler than Jey Uso. It's a little bit more of a brawler. Once they get outside, Jey Uso is just all outside brawler. So, that, again, that, that's also really good. Uh, Daniel Bryan, again, he does the knee plus. It's a Frankensteiner. The yes kicks. The label lock. All the classic attacks. He even had a big splash, too. That was pretty cool. Um, the label lock. And then eventually the, the running knee ends Jey Uso, even though Jey Uso got in the super kick. I think he missed a splash somewhere. It was a, it was a so, solid match. Daniel Bryan, again, he, he's not the flashiest wrestler. Him and Jey Uso, he can carry a match, especially with someone experienced. Because remember, Jey Uso, you can say what you want about him, but he's been a tag team champion. He knows what he's doing in the ring. It's a solid cheeseburger match. Then we have Big E taking on Sami Zayn in the Lumberjack match. And I'm like, oh. Like, so, I don't... Because this was the main event, I was thinking, I'm like, you know, this smells... Can you smell what the hobo is cooking? Gimmick infringement. I know I shouldn't have said that, but still. It just felt like there was going to be a title change. Once Big E, because they've been building up Big E for so long, Paul Heyman on Talking Smack said, hey, you have to get out of the shadow of the New Day. This is a perfect way to do it. And so this way, Big E can have the belt going into the new year. It's going to be a good match. It'll probably be a good feud, I'm sure. Next Friday on New Year's Day, Sami Zayn's going to complain about everything. So it allows us to build, and they are, I think they are going to have fans for the Royal Rumble at the Tropicana. So again, that's, that's going to build up. So now you can have all these matches, and the crowd's going to pop when they see Big E with the belt. And or if he defends the belt against Sami Zayn. So they can, if, 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 if they do it right, this can be really good, and not just that single one-off moment. Uh, so Big E versus Sami Zayn in Lumberjack match. Uh, good rope running, again, good action. Sami Zayn knows how to run the ropes. He can slow it down as a heel. Big E, he can speed it up. He does the classic big man stuff. So you have a lot of mix of, of different aspects and styles of wrestling where it all seems to flow, to flow together. Again, really good, really entertaining stuff. Uh, again, the heel lumberjacks get, get Big E. Uh, they beat him up a little bit, hold him. Sami Zayn flies, he lands on everyone. Sami Zayn throws the shirt, throws his t-shirt at Big E. That just made Big E mad. Big E hit a series of, of two belly-to-belly -belly suplexes. 
Now Sami Zayn missed a Haluva kick. Um, instead, he he's the Uranagi, which is not a, really a, a judo Uranagi. It's something totally different. He does hit a blue thunder bomb on Biggie. Biggie spears Zayn through the ropes. Um, Biggie has Sami Zayn says, "I'm I'm done with this." Because there was a lumberjack brawl, Sammy tried to escape. Eventually, he got he got chased down. Paul Cruz has some speed on his on his wheels, so that was good. And uh, then there was uh, they carried him back to the ring. Briggy brought him in the hard way. Then there was the belly to belly. The some other move, and then hit the big ending. Oh, big splash! Uh, belly to belly, big splash, and big ending. Big E is the new Intercontinental Champion. Bravo! I'll tell you what. I'm not this. Normally, the lumberjack matches are a big schmoz or a big mess. This actually made sense. I enjoyed this match. The lumberjacks didn't take away from it. They actually added to it instead of beating up the one guy, then waiting for the other faction to come on. They actually said, "Okay, no, we'll, we're going to throw you back in the ring. You're not, you're not done yet." So that was good. It, it actually worked as a match. Again, the old lumberjack style. Is that two guys enter, you don't you can't escape, you get tossed in there by your buddies and, until you figure the solution out. So this actually made sense and it was enjoyable. And I'll tell you what, it's another solid cheeseburger match. And that was SmackDown. I'll tell you what, it was in a supremely enjoyable show. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, what's going to happen next week? Um, there is no wrestling Sunday. Monday, I'm going to do my typical Raw. I'm just doing a Raw review. Like three hours, like sitting for three hours is freaking long. Uh, Tuesday, there's no show because Impact's just doing a best of. Wednesday... I'll be doing the AEW review. Thursday, I'm, I'm off. Friday's going to be a SmackDown review. And yeah. Oh, wait. No, wait a second. I knew I was forgetting something. Um, Thursday is going to be the New Ye New Year's Eve show for the Daytona Beach Bonfire League. I still have to make that card. A couple of people have to make. I promised Sonny Bimbo he'd be in the main event. He's going to be in some triple threat main event. He's going to be in... Oh, he's he's going to be in the new people. Yeah, I should... Oh, that's a good idea. I have to write that down. Let's see here. Sonny Bimbo is going to be in the, the main event. Because if I don't write this down, I'll forget about it. Main event... New People Battle Royal. New And by new I mean definitely the past year. Past year. Which is probably a lot of people. No, well I think that's Yeah, that's right. Some people have been here a long time. So it's gonna be the New People Battle Royal, that's the main event. I'll figure out everything else sometime next week. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. And I hope your Christmas gifts were as cool and as functional as mine is. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. That sounds pretty cool. But I can just set it there. And I can go hands-free, baby. I'm like, again, I'd like to thank everyone.